The Night Beat starts right now. Over 1,000 acres have been scorched in Medina County. The fire has been burning for more than two days, and people who live there have had to evacuate. We hear from them tonight. And new video of that massive fire near the Alamo Dome, an abandoned building now deemed a total loss. What we found just feet from that fire coming up, but first. We begin with breaking news tonight. A cross-country chase ends in a crash in San Antonio city limits. Multiple law enforcement agencies are now involved, including Border Patrol. The night team's John Paul Barajas is live at Division and the I-35 Frontage Road, just a few blocks from where that crash happened. John Paul, what can you tell us? Courtney, according to SAPD, they believe this might have been a human smuggling case or event. The chase started in Frio County, went through Medina County, into Bear County, and finally ended up here in uh, San Antonio City Limits, crashing into a fence, doing some damage there just up the road on 35 and Hawthorne. A sergeant we spoke to says six people in total were in the car. The driver was taken to the hospital in an unknown condition. Four migrants were taken into custody by Border Patrol, and one person got away. The sergeant explained SAPD never chased the suspect vehicle and the people caught were already in custody when they arrived. They don't know, but don't think any other cars were hit during this chase. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. John Paul, thank you. Tonight, the Dos Goats fire in Medina County still burning. In two days' time, 1,092 acres have been destroyed. Agencies across the state rushing in to help. An update around 9 tonight on the Texas Wildfire Incident Response website reported the fire is now 50 percent contained. That's good news, up from 10 percent earlier today. Governor Greg Abbott was in Medina County this afternoon to be briefed on that fire. Meanwhile, people living there tell the night team's Lee Waldman they never imagined this would happen. Well, this is history happening here, Michael. 1,000 acres, I mean, never up here. Regina Allen was driving to get her family food Friday when she saw this truck on fire on County Road 271. Yeah, I mean, within seconds, it was just all the way going up the hill. Just two days later, the footprint of that fire has grown. Our chopper showing the 1,092 acres of devastation. There were probably three or four fire trucks blocking the road because a fire had already jumped the only way out. Sherry Barclay was at the Wilkie's home in the High Mountain Ranch subdivision, an area still deemed unsafe, taking care of their dogs when the fire shifted closer. Firefighters were able to clear the one road out. Barclay joined the caravan of people escaping. It was like really scary because you could see the flames, you know, getting really close to the houses and it was burning the trees and it was shooting up in the air and the helicopters were coming in and the planes. And the Wilkie's dogs are safe. We saved them. They no. wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for you. They wouldn't have made it out. So is their home. Philip Kyle lives in the same subdivision. For the first time today, he heard his home also safe. Kyle's elderly father-in-law had to be rescued by Medina County deputies. Two of them carried him out. Uh, it was it was amazing. And then they relayed to me that the water drops were going on top of them to keep the fire because the fire was like uh, 75 feet or 100 feet away, something like that. It was coming. Some of his neighbors, not so lucky. Governor Greg Abbott telling us three homes have been destroyed, 40 still in danger, and 119 homes are without power. Things can get out of control very quickly, and to know that there's been no one who's lost their life or injured uh, is a miracle. A miracle and a testament to the 19 agencies from across the state, all here in Medina County, working together to fight this fire. Officials here are worried about the wind forecasted throughout the week. They say even a small spark could ignite all of the dried brush and trees. In Medina County, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. More wildfires sparking up in our area as well. There are now two wildfires in Kerr County alone. The Texas A&M Forest Service is calling the latest one the Crooked Creek Fire. It's just east of the town of Mountain Home. So far, the Forest Service says flames have spread 100 acres. Crews have it 70 percent contained. That's up from 20 percent earlier today. The other fire continues to burn between Comfort and Center Point, which has burned 160 acres. The Forest Service now lists the fire as 95% contained, up from 80. And there is an even larger wildfire burning out west that we need to tell you about. 5,500 acres now scorched from what's being called the West Nueces Fire. This is northeast of Brackettville. The Forest Service says this wildfire is 0% contained. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey joining us, tracking the fire danger in our viewing area. 
Sarah, this is just, you know, extended fires all over our area. And wildfire danger is going to continue into tomorrow as well, Courtney. I want to show you a, a different view here of the fires from the satellite. Now, this is earlier when we still had daylight. Notice that around Medina Lake, that fire did not get the smoke plume that it did yesterday. It was reignited yesterday and produced quite a bit of a smoke plume out there. That was not the case today. But out, we were just talking about that fire in northeastern Kenny County. That's 5,500 acres. Look at that massive smoke plume that moved up, up all the way into Rock Springs. Now again, tomorrow is another day where grass fire danger is high. Red flag warning in effect for all of the KSAT 12 viewing area from 10 o'clock to 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Very dry and gusty conditions are going to aggravate fires out there and can start more fires easily. So coming up, we're going to be talking about fire safety and whether or not we have any chance for rain in the next coming days. Courtney. Sarah, thank you. We'll see you in just a bit. Our coverage of these wildfires continues online at KSAT.com. Just scan the QR code right now on your phone. It's on the screen. It will take you directly to an article with the updates from Governor Greg Abbott and a link to report any damage. Also information on evacuation sites that have been set up. Other news we're covering this evening. One woman is dead and one man is in critical condition after a shooting at an apartment complex on the northeast side. San Antonio police officers say they are looking for multiple suspects in this case. It happened at the Judson Meadow apartment complex. A light blue car was riddled with bullets and windows were shot out. While our crews were there, they did see at least three men handcuffed and put in the back of police units. Both victims are believed to be in their late teens or early 20s. We will be sure to keep you updated on this developing story. A man found fatally shot in an SUV yesterday morning has now been identified. He was 27-year-old Anthony Maurice Dixon. Police still working to track down the suspect in this case. It happened around 2 Saturday morning when police arrived to I-35 North and Pine Street. They found a man with multiple gunshot wounds. They say he had been shot several times through the windows and doors. We have new video from an overnight fire not far from the Alamo Dome. Julie and Jake Valenzuela sent this video to KSAT. It shows the flames as they were driving along I-37. As they get closer, you can see the flames completely covering a building on Delaware Street. Several police and firefighters were on scene. It happened just before midnight. Firefighters say flames could be seen reaching up to 20 feet in the area. The fire was so intense, part of the building collapsed. Thankfully, no injuries were reported, but arson is investigating. So we went back to the scene of that fire earlier today, and it wasn't long before we caught up with an artist who said he first thought the fire had been burning on the building he was working on. But his work of art sits just a few feet away from where the fire happened. It was just a shock because I thought maybe electrical fire or something could have gone up, maybe interior with the building, you know, sparks fly. Uh, so it was kind of a relief to get here and see that it wasn't as, as bad as I thought it could have been, you know. Uh, a relief that allows us to push forward and still be able to progress and finish this production that we're working on right now. The artist says other murals in the city's east side inspired a construction company to allow him to turn their warehouse into a showstopper. 30 artists are helping him fill the space with the retro Spurs theme. The hope is to add the Spurs Coyote and other Spurs favorites like Tim Duncan. He hopes to open an art show at the venue on April 17th. Other top stories we're following. A sudden stop leads to a traffic tie-up causing a horse to be thrown from a trailer. It happened near Rigsby and Southeast Loop 410 earlier today. Officers say the driver with the horse trailer attached hit the brakes when someone ahead stopped suddenly. The trailer with horses inside spun around and hit a barrier. Police say one of the horses was thrown from the trailer and died. No other injuries were reported and that roadway has since opened back up. A head-on crash kills one person and lands another in jail. It happened on Flores Street near Bonner Avenue on the city's south side. Police say a silver Buick and Chevy Trailblazer collided just after midnight. The driver in the Buick was thrown from the vehicle and died. Police say the man driving the Chevy is suspected of driving while intoxicated. Ukrainian and Russian officials have been talking daily via video conference, and there's now an agreement for the parties to meet in person later this week. Meanwhile, the city of Mariupol remains under siege. Residents there say there is no water or food. Here's ABC's Ike Jachi with the latest on the war in Ukraine. 
Ukrainian and Russian officials announcing they have agreed to a new round of in-person peace talks to be held in Turkey later this week. That news coming as the war in Ukraine continues to take a heartbreaking toll. Ukrainian officials say at least 139 children have been killed since the Russian invasion began in February. In the besieged city of Mariupol, residents say they're running out of supplies, including basic necessities like food and water. In the western city of Lviv, at least one Russian Russian missile struck an oil depot on Saturday, leaving five people injured. A short time later, a second missile attack hit a defense facility. In his latest address, Ukrainian President Zelensky renewed his call for just 1% of NATO's arsenal. During this week's NATO summit, Zelensky said Ukraine is especially in need of more planes and tanks. Secretary of State Antony Blinken announcing $100 million in additional civilian security assistance to Ukraine, including armored vehicles, medical supplies, and communications equipment. Saturday's attack in Lviv were not far from Ukraine's border with Poland. President Biden with a staunch warning to Vladimir Putin. Don't even think about moving on one single inch of NATO territory. But the president facing some fallout after saying this. For God's sake. This man cannot remain power. The White House claiming the president was not, in fact, calling for regime change in Russia. The president, the White House, uh, made the point last night that, quite simply, uh, President Putin cannot be empowered to wage war uh, or engage in aggression uh, against Ukraine uh, or anyone else. The question now, will Putin see Biden's remark as an escalation or a validation to keep fighting. In the mind of Putin, it will play on his mind and it could complicate matters going down the road. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, taking a live look outside with live cam, a more calm night. We know there are raging wildfires across our region and that wind's gonna pick up again tomorrow. Our Sarah Spivey is keeping an eye out on that and has your beginning of Fiesta forecast. Tonight, the 94th Academy Awards rolled out the red carpet in Los Angeles. Who took home the gold, who wasn't able to make it, and who won the best original song? And a school district in North Texas taking books off their shelves, that superintendent secretly recording while talking about their latest policies. Economical leaders of San Antonio have taken the annual trip to D.C. for over 40 years. This year, why local leaders say it's the best way to influence members of our Congress and their goal for these trips. For more than 40 years, economic leaders of San Antonio have taken the annual trip to Washington, D.C. to advocate on behalf of the Alamo City. Local leaders say it is the best way to influence our members of Congress, administration officials, and leaders at the Pentagon to shape funding decisions and the direction of policy, meeting them face to face. A local leader joined Max Massey from our nation's capital to talk about the goals of the trip. Richard Pettis, the president and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, joined us live. We talked about a lot. We talked about the goals for the trip, talking to lawmakers and policy shapers, specifically talking about our military men and women and talking about local transportation. For roads, as we know, potholes and streets are one of the biggest issues in San Antonio. And then parks. And so we want to focus a lot of time, effort and energy on those projects that we already have in the hopper show the federal government, and then make those dollars go that much further. We talked about the successes of previous SA to DC trips and the state of our local economy. You can check out our full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us next Sunday at 8 a.m. for our next Leading SA segment. Guys, back to you. We hear the music. We're just days away from fireworks, chicken on a stick, and Fiesta medals. This year, the Fiesta parades are making a comeback. And here's a special offer for all of you KSAT viewers. You can get tickets to exclusive viewing parties. For tickets and more information on how you can celebrate Fiesta with us, scan the QR code on your screen right now. You could watch the Battle of Flowers or Fiesta Flambeau parades in a private area at Crockett Park, along with some KSAT journalists. And I'll I know you're, you know, you're taking a look at, you know, the Fiesta forecast, which everyone's looking at. Yeah. But we want to start with the heat today because we, we've talked about the winds dealing with these wildfires, but the heat 
also plays a big role in that. You're exactly right, Courtney. The warmer weather aids in uh, fire uh, development and spreading grass fires, and it was much warmer than seasonably average. The high temperature today in San Antonio, 87 degrees. Take a look at the almanac for the day. That's uh, 10 degrees above the average high, which is 77. But this morning, notice was was pretty cool. We got down to 49 degrees, so it was one of those days where we experienced a pretty big temperature swing, chilly in the morning and then warm in the afternoon. Another thing you noticed today was the winds and winds are still a bit breezy. We're looking at a wind from the southeast right now at about 12 miles per hour at the airport, 10 to 15 miles per hour, and these winds are going to continue throughout the night and into your Monday as well. Take a look at the wind gust forecast tonight. Winds will be gusting up to about 25 30 miles per hour and then tomorrow 20 to 25 miles per hour. The gusty dry and warm conditions continue again. Another red flag warning in effect tomorrow from 10 o'clock in the morning to 8 p.m. Very dry and gusty conditions would spread grass fires rapidly, and there's already quite a few grass fires out there, including a very big one, uh, 5,500 uh, 5, acres burning in northern Kenny County. Of course, that fire in Medina County, which we are continuing to cover and will continue to cover tomorrow as well. So we need to do our part to avoid creating and spreading grass fires tomorrow. What are some tips? First of all, no camp fires or burn piles for your Monday. Avoid using tools that create sparks like uh, chainsaws and things like that. Make sure to dispose cigarettes properly. Don't flick them outside of your vehicle because those could land in grass and create fires as well. Don't drag trailer trains as those may create sparks. And then finally, don't park vehicles on grass because that can cause fires to spread and a vehicle fire is what caused that Medina County fire. Now tomorrow morning we're going to wake up with a bit more clouds than uh, what we've been seeing over the last few days. It's going to be mild in the mid to upper 50s, 57 in San Antonio, 55 in Seguin, 55 in Holotus, 53 in Bandera, 55 in Kerrville, and 55 in Canyon Lake. And then we will see ample sunshine tomorrow, so another warm day. Uh, we'll be looking at a high temperature of 85 in San Antonio, 87 in Poteet, 88 in Hondo, 87 in Bandera, 84 in Seguin, 85 in New Braunfels. What about rain? Rain would help alleviate drought conditions and fire weather, but we just don't see a good chance of rain, unfortunately, in the forecast over the next few days. We do have a window of opportunity for rainfall. A few storms on Tuesday night are possible along a weak cold front. Some of these will be uh, severe, especially up toward Austin, Waco, Dallas, and Abilene. That's where scattered severe storms are possible. We're going to be on the tail end of this system, so I can't rule out an isolated, strong or severe storm as it moves through Tuesday night, but it's very unlikely. Even though there's this light pink shading around San Antonio, the main severe weather threat is well to the north of San Antonio, up near Fredericksburg, and of course near points uh, up toward the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And what about rain? I mean, this tells it all. It is going to be a small window for rain, and so we're not going to be seeing a good amount of rainfall. In the areas that get rain, maybe a tenth to two tenths of an inch of rainfall, but around San Antonio, less than a tenth of an inch is likely if you get any rain at all. So I know that's not the good news that we wanted to hear when it comes to rainfall, but just know that at least this week ahead is going to be uh, fairly warm and fairly comfortable outside for outdoor activities. The one exception is going to be windy on Wednesday with gusts up to 40 miles per hour. So keep in mind again, tomorrow morning fog and clouds, 85 degrees, Tuesday morning clouds as well, and 85 for the high. And then of course that small window for rain rain on on Tuesday night. Uh, it's just not looking good for rain and drought is likely to to worsen across the area. Courtney, keep an eye on those necessary rain chances. Thank you so much, Sarah. We'll be right back. Our San Antonio Spurs have closed the gap on the New Orleans Pelicans for one of the final playing positions. For more on what's an instant replay, let's check in with Greg Simmons. Yeah, and then we rely on the Lakers to kind of help us out a little bit tonight. And what do they do? And we now know who's headed to the final four in college basketball coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Hey. Off the glass and good as DeJounte Murray takes it himself. Our San Antonio Spurs got a must win against the Pelicans in New Orleans this weekend to help get closer to that play in tournament. DeJounte Murray picks up his 13th triple-double of the season, his 18th of his career, with some big help from Josh Richardson and Jock Landale. Mark, so LeBron wanted it. He's going to chase it down. He's going to have to fire it. Long distance. Got it again! 
Now the question is, can the Spurs get a big-time assist from the Lakers when they witness LeBron James make some history? They were in New Orleans to try and close the gap between the Spurs and the Pelicans to just a half game with a victory tonight. We've got the highlights. But if you'd have told me before the game that we're going to hold them to 28% from the field, they're going to shoot 23% from the three-point line, uh, and we lose, I wouldn't have believed you. We now know who's headed to the Final Four after Villanova tops Houston to win the South Regional here in San Antonio this weekend. And Kansas and North Carolina punch their tickets today. We've got all the highlights from March Madness. All that plus, can San Antonio FC stay undefeated on game day? What does Celine Dion have to do with our play of the week? And who wins the national championship in the NCAA tournament tonight? You decide. Instant replay is live and it's after the night deep, the Oscars. And you'll never guess what we're debating tonight in the sports guys in the Oscars. Oh, okay. That's a lot of good teases. I know it's late, but you better stay up for that. Well, I think we're going to have some of that in a minute, too, okay. for you. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Still ahead on the night beat, a school district in North Texas pulling books off the shelves. The superintendent recorded talking about their new policies, what was being said. Plus, the latest on the deadly theme park ride that killed a Florida, t Florida teenager. His family now hiring an attorney. And what the park has to say. Also, it's the moment the entertainment world has been waiting for, the Academy Awards. We've got a big recap for you. Also, who got slapped on stage? Making headlines around the nation now, the parents of the teen who fell to his death from a Florida amusement park ride have now hired attorneys. It's a story we've continued to follow since Friday. Carolina Cardona spoke to ride experts and witnesses about what happened. Tonight, Orlando's Icon Park freefall ride remains closed as investigators continue to look for answers surrounding the death of Tyree Sampson. The focus of this investigation is going to be on the training of the staff uh, on the ground who, who may not have secured uh, Tyree before the ride took off. Investigators have not determined what caused Samson to fall out of the ride, but in viral video that shows Samson's fall and is too graphic to show, workers can be heard in the moments after discussing safety measures. Attorney Bob Hilliard, who is representing the family, spoke with us about the legal actions being taken to find who is responsible for the death of the 14-year-old boy. The uh, investigation is also going to include the design of the ride itself. There absolutely should be no way a ride can leave the ground if there is any indication that any one of the passengers is not secured. The company that operates this ride says workers are responsible for checking lights on the restraint system to ensure they are properly secured. The ride will not ascent unless those harnesses are locked in. And, you know, again, so... There were no indications that there was anything different. My first reaction, like it felt like a dream. We spoke with Montre Williams, one of the witnesses from Thursday night. He says he was standing in front of the ride the night of Tyree's death and noticed the red flags. Nobody walked around to see if everybody was securely, you know, locked in. And there has to be redundancies. It has to be more than uh, a 16 year old minimum wage kid walking around checking whether or not your harness works. That was CNN's Carolina Cordoba reporting. And the ride passed a safety inspection in December before it was allowed to open. That's according to a safety inspection report. Rising gas prices have some thieves targeting dealerships to steal fuel, causing thousands of dollars in damage. One gas station in Illinois was hit three times last week, and the thieves were caught on security video. Surveillance footage shows a man entering an auto sales lot during early morning hours, drilling holes in car gas tanks and getting away with buckets of gas. You can see the gas leaking from this truck after the man took off buckets in hand. The owner of that store saying he filed a police report but has had no luck in finding or stopping the person. Yes, expensive, but still, I mean, he cannot like damage cars for $10. I mean, it costs us maybe thousands of dollars just to repair them. Despite having several surveillance cameras already, they do plan on adding more. Now in Oregon, four people were killed after a driver crashed into an encampment of homeless people. Authorities in Salem say the crash happened early Sunday. Two people 
died at the scene. Two others were taken to the hospital where they later died. Police say the driver of the vehicle was also taken in an ambulance to the hospital. No word on the extent of the driver's injuries or if any charges have been filed. Now to today's big story surrounding many big movie stars. The Oscars returned tonight in full force to the Dolby Theater. There was a lot of anticipation about many of the nominees. There were moments that are making history and others wrapped in controversy. Zareen Shaw's at the Dolby Theater with the highlights. For the 94th Academy Awards. It's the moment the entertainment world had been waiting for. The Academy Awards back at the Dolby Theater. It was the first time in three years that hosts were back at the Oscars at all. Amy Schumer, Regina Hall, and Wanda Sykes. This year, the Academy hired three women to host because it's cheaper than hiring one man. Making history together as the first female team of three. And that wasn't the only historic moment from this year's show. Troy Costa. I really want to thank all of the wonderful deaf theater stages where I was allowed and given the opportunity to develop my craft as an actor. Many eyes on the night's prizes, especially after the Oscars continued expanding their membership the last few years. Oh, queer, openly queer woman of color and Afro-Latina who found her strength in life through art. Encanto! I am so proud to be a part of a film that puts beautiful, diverse characters in front and center. And of course, this year, the performance is happening again live. We worked and built this on our own. Performing to the excited crowd. That the mountain's too high. And the Oscar goes to the long goodbye. But there was some controversy over this year's format, as the awards presentations for eight categories were recorded before the live broadcast. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. And another controversy came when Will Smith appeared to take offense from a joke comedian Chris Rock made about his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. <laughs> oh, wow. And the Oscar goes to. And some of the biggest names in Hollywood are up for the big awards. Will Smith! Jessica Chastain, yeah. And for best picture. Okay, Coda. <laughs> And so many stars making their way to Elton John's AIDS Benefit Foundation party. He actually couldn't be there because he had a scheduling conflict, but Lady Gaga stepping up along with several other co-hosts to make sure the party still goes on. Reporting from Hollywood, Zoreen Shah, ABC News. Coming up in North Texas ISD, banning some books from their shelves. Their superintendent was secretly recorded. What he was saying up next. A disturbance in downtown San Antonio has left one man in critical condition. He was found on Commerce Street just after 2 this morning. When police arrived, they found a crashed vehicle and a man inside unconscious. Witnesses tell police that shooting happened somewhere else. Based on those statements, police found the location of the crime. It was at the Via Transit Ride Center on Crockett Street. Police say people were leaving the suspect shot at the man's car, hitting him. This investigation is ongoing. In China, Shanghai will implement a new lockdown for mass COVID-19 testing. This new measure comes as health officials in China reported more than 5,500 locally transmitted COVID-19 cases. Nearly half of them were in Shanghai. The eastern half of the city will stay home for four days starting on Monday. The rest of Shanghai will go into lockdown starting on Friday. No one will be allowed to leave their homes. Back here at home, the Ciclovia event returning for its 19th year in San Antonio's Mission Reach area. It ran from the HEB on South Flores all the way to Roosevelt Park. The event is held for families wanting to ride bikes, run, skateboard, or do other fun activities without worrying about navigating through traffic. The YMCA worked with the city to close off the streets. The event is one of the largest in the U.S., drawing thousands for fitness and fun in the streets of San Antonio. One San Antonio bicyclist stumbled across the event. I just came out for a bike ride with a friend and we were riding all the way to Blue Star and we're like, hey, what's going on? And we're like, we should we stop by? And we're like, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people set out out here. The event also had COVID-19 vaccines available and health screenings. The next event will be held in September. We'll be right back.
Well, a lot of the questions that we have as we look at this live cam is what will tomorrow bring for all of these wildfires? So Sarah Spivey has been with us all day tracking the wind and the temperatures. Sarah, what can we look forward to? Well, grass fire danger continues tomorrow for us all across the KSAT 12 viewing area. Another red flag warning in effect. I want to show you before sunset what the satellite look like and you can actually make out uh, the biggest fire in the area uh, right now, which is actually in northern Kenny County. Uh, nearly a thousand acres burning and zero percent contained at last check. The smoke plume was visible from Rock Springs. Of course, the fire that's impacting uh, most people is that fire just south of Medina Lake where evacuations have uh, been in place for areas. Now that fire is now 50% uh, contained, so there's some good news there and elsewhere. There's a fire up in northern uh, Kerr County that is also starting to see some improvement as well there, but tomorrow another grass fire danger day all of the ksat 12 viewing area in a red flag warning until 8 p.m tomorrow from 10 a.m to 8 p.m tomorrow including san antonio and bear county as well as uh, comal guadalupe county all of the ksat 12 viewing area because we're going to have very dry conditions with gusty winds again tomorrow so any fires that develop will spread rapidly firefighters will have their hands full tomorrow and we'll continue to keep you updated best thing you can do avoid any kind of burning tomorrow and make sure to uh, fully uh, extinguish cigarettes before disposing of them. All right, the high temperature today was 87 degrees. That is 10 degrees above the average of 77. The warm weather also aiding in uh, fire weather danger and tomorrow's going to be another warm day for us. Outside right now, it is 67 degrees. We've got partly cloudy skies, some cirrus clouds out there and it's still breezy. Winds are from the southwest at 10 15 miles per hour and we're going to continue to see wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour in the overnight hours and continuing into Monday as well. So that's why with the gusty conditions, any fires would spread rapidly a grass fire danger uh, tomorrow, but we will see something a little different in the morning hours potential for some patchy fog and overcast skies early tomorrow morning for the morning commute. So if you have early morning plans, morning commute, know that you may have to use those low Low beams and watch out for some areas of patchy fog, but those skies are going to clear and it's going to be a sunny afternoon and a warm afternoon at that. So tomorrow morning waking up in the mid 50s, 55 in Seguin, 55 in New Braunfels, 55 in Castroville, 57 in Stinson, 57 in Converse, 53 in Comfort and 55 in Kerrville. Tomorrow afternoon though with that ample sunshine, temperatures are going to be the mid to upper 80s, 85 in San Antonio, 87 in Botete, 88 in Hondo, 87 in Band Dara, 85 New Braunfels, 83 in Bernie. Satellite and radar shows quiet across the state of Texas. There is some snow across uh, parts of New England and the Northeast, but a ridge of high pressure settling overhead. That's what's going to keep us dry tomorrow and Tuesday. But Tuesday night, an approaching low pressure system is going to bring a small window of opportunity for rain. But before we get too excited, look at this future cast. This is a look at early Wednesday morning, overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. Most of the rain is going to be up near the Dallas Fort Worth area in Oklahoma. We are going to be on the tail end of this system. So our chance for rain Tuesday night into Wednesday morning only 30%. It's not looking good as far as rainfall amounts go. As for uh, temperatures for the rest of the week and weather conditions after that system moves through Wednesday is going to be very windy wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. I really don't anticipate fire weather conditions to go down at all this week because it's going to stay windy and warm. Courtney. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Now to the book banning going on in a North Texas school district. The school superintendent is heard on an audio recording mandating books on the sexuality of transgender people and other content be pulled from the shelves. An audio obtained by a collaboration of several media organizations. Granbury Independent School District Superintendent Jeremy Glenn is heard telling a group of librarians to pull all books on transgender issues and sexuality. In Texas, opponents of the ban on transgender books say they are especially important to kids who are black, gay, and queer, and that they're the ones being hurt. Now to a heartwarming story everyone has been talking about. A blind 11th grader never imagining she creates so much excitement with her basketball skills, but she's soaking it all up. CNN's Matt Whitgos sat down with the Michigan high schooler to talk about the shot and the program that made it happen. After a couple of taps on the backboard, 
Jules Hoagland takes her shot. The crowd of students from Zealand East and West erupts in excitement. I was like, everyone's staring at me, but I can't see them staring at me, so this is good. <laughs> Because Jules is blind, she has help on the hardwood. The girl in the video behind Jules is Allie Guffey. She's my eyes on the court because I don't have my cane, so I have to put my trust in her to make sure she doesn't let me get hit by balls and she guides me in the right direction. The two are inseparable on... Yeah, just make sure that she's all lined up. You can put your left foot forward a little bit. And off the court. I had never met anyone who was blind before, so I knew nothing. She put a lot of trust into me. Um, and it just, we had, it was a lot of trial and error, but we have come very, very far. And now we're in a class together for the past two years. They knew each other back in middle school, but the unified sports program made the two grow together almost like sisters. I'm really going to miss you, Ali. And. Too. I know next year I'm going to feel the same way. This program started several years ago as a chance to make friends. To watch the culture shift of our school community um, really made a difference. And just to be able to watch how that's continued to grow, um, students be accepted, students be shown that they matter and given, an, given a chance um, to really to prove that to the school body. Yep, got it. You got it. Yep. Okay, now stop. This is Allie's senior year. She's already making plans to see Jules back out on the court. So then like for that to just be like done is like, it's hard to think about because this has been like my family for three years. But I think it's humbling when you realize that those goals are reality and that those are the relationships that now exist in our campus, in our community. That was CNN's Matt Wickos reporting. Coming up in this week's box office, Sandra Bullock, Channing Tatum, and Daniel Radcliffe all in one movie. Coming up, the roles they are playing in The Lost City. Listen, Loretta, we need you to promote your new book on The Lost City. You can't spend your life in the bathtub drinking Chardonnay with eyes. The Lost City stars Sandra Bullock as a romance writer, Channing Tatum as her slightly diluted cover model. You do know you're not Dash, right? Dash is a character I made up. Dash! I, I, oh my god. And Daniel Radcliffe as a billionaire who thinks her books are real, wants her to help him find an ancient lost treasure, and won't take no for an answer. Unchain me! That's your seatbelt. All three wind up in the jungle. We're here to save you. I'm certified CPR, I'm certified CrossFit. I have snacks. Off to them! Their ensuing adventures involve climbing dangerous cliffs, losing their car over said cliffs. Oh! Bullock in a pink sequin jumpsuit and Channing covered with leeches. Uh, I just suck it on my butt like a big old jamba juice. Oh, and Brad Pitt shows up too. Getting you out of here. Why are you so handsome? My dad was a weatherman. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, the San Antonio Spurs will try to go undefeated in their four-game road trip when they face the Rockets tomorrow night in Houston. We'll get you ready for the big game and their big week with Know Your Foe. And can San Antonio FC stay undefeated to start the 2022 season? Let's find out with Greg Simmons with What's on Instant Replay. I just like that promo. <laughs> My dad was a weatherman. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> and are the Texas Longhorns headed to the Final Four of the NCAA Women's Tournament coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Collins with Valanchunas all over him outside. Gives it off to Landale with a two-hand dunk. Yeah, nice effort there from Zach. Are the Spurs being at the right time? They have won three in a row on the road trip, including their big 107-103 victory over the Pelicans, and are now poised to go undefeated on the road when they face the Rockets tomorrow night in Houston. We'll get you ready for their big game and their big week ahead tonight with Know Your Foe. And do the Texas Longhorns wind up in the Final Four of the NCAA Women's Tournament? We will show you. No, we were wrestling for minutes, and... We just kept on going and didn't give up. San Antonio FC is trying to kick off their 2022 season by winning three in a row by facing their rivals in the Rio Grande Valley tonight. And how Celine Dion is helping sell out the Savannah Bananas baseball games. It's our Sarah Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram Play of the Week. All that plus, who's headed the Final Four of March Madness and why the missions will be wearing Thor jerseys and how you can score one. Instant Replay is live and it's next. I don't know how we follow that Oscars. I just don't know how. <laughs> well, with Savannah Bananas, you got it's okay, we got Dion. Something. Like, right. There's a lot of stuff in there. I Good. think you can do it. All right, thanks. We'll be right back.
Well, that is all of our time for now for all of us here at KSAT. Thank you so much for watching. Tune into GMSA for all your latest overnight news and all new instant replay starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Our San Antonio Spurs were able to pull out within one and a half games of the New Orleans Pelicans, who are on the ninth playing position of the Western Conference. That's after their revenge win in New Orleans last night. But the Pelicans had to host the Los Angeles Lakers tonight at home, who are now in the tenth playing position, one game in front of the Spurs after a turn of events this evening with just eight games left in the regular season. After being embarrassed by the Pelicans at home just over a week ago, 124 to 91, the Spurs were not going to let that happen again, and as a result, stay undefeated on their four-game road trip. But the Spurs would have to overcome another slow start. Zach Collins and Najee Marshall were already joining each other. When Willie Hernan Gomez was shooting free throws, and after one quarter, the Spurs were down 32-22. But to the Spurs' credit, they do not fool. They fight back. There's Jonte Murray just getting his big night started with a steal, and how about a behind-the-back pass to Joshua Primo for the slam? Later in the quarter, Josh Richardson hit the three to cap off a 10-0 run. After being down by 12, they lead 45-44. And Keldon Johnson adds a tip in to keep the Spurs up 58-57 at the half. It was a close game the rest of the way when Jock Landell took over in the fourth quarter. This slam gives the Spurs the lead 90-89. Landell shows off his outside game as well, the step back three. And now the Spurs are out in front 102-92. But the Pelicans won't fly away. C.J. McCollum closes the gap with just two with a driving layup with 41 seconds left. The Pelicans try to take the lead, but this three is off of its mark in the process. A rebound goes out to DeJounte Murray, who, by the way, is able to find Keldon Johnson. He's taking it in for the big-time slam. Murray finishes with a triple-double of 15 points, 13 assists, 11 rebounds, his 18th of his career, 13th this season alone, and the 107-103 victory. We want to get in bad. Uh, you know, I'm here to say it. Uh, we want to get in. The players really want to get in. Uh, and, you know, we're going to come out and try to approach it that way, you know. Obviously, you might have a great start, you know. Uh, you might have a slow start, you know. But no matter what, just play 48 minutes and, uh, you know, try to get a win. And Jock Landale was a key to the Spurs' victory, scoring eight of the Spurs' 12 points in that 12-0 run, including a pair of free throws to push the Spurs back up to the lead after being down by two in the fourth quarter. It was just good to kind of see it all come together down the stretch, and I think that that's been a consistent theme for us recently is, you know, guys around DJ are starting to step up a little bit and help him carry that load. And, um, you know, that's it's I mean, he's taking it up another notch as well. So, uh, you know, we're just managing to click, especially with some big pieces out like Dougie, uh, Dev, uh, Lonnie, all those boys and, and kind of finding new rotations as they as they come and being ready to just roll with the punches and, and, and take whatever gets thrown at us in stride. So, um, you know, it was good for us to see that all come together tonight in a very important game. All right, since joining the Spurs in a trade with Boston for Derek White on the trade deadline, Josh Richardson has been spectacular at 18 points last night in the Spurs win. And get this, the silver and black are 4-2 and two in games he has started. <laughs> Now that the Spurs have won four out of their last five, it's time to see what lies ahead of the Silver and Black with eight games left in the regular season. This coming week, the Spurs will be in Houston to take on the Rockets, who are in place in the last place, I should say, in the Western Conference, and the worst team in the NBA. After tomorrow's game with the Rockets, the Spurs will host the second-place Memphis Grizzlies, a team they've already lost to three times, already by an average of 11 points, including their 118-105 loss on February the 28th. Then the Spurs should get some help by hosting back-to-back -back games against the Portland Trailblazers. San Antonio defeated the Blazers on the road Wednesday, 133-96. DeJounte Murray scored a team-high 28 points, and Kelvin Johnson scored 26, including five three-pointers. Coach Pop says Wednesday's win wasn't a fair fight, considering Portland has a lot of players out. Nevertheless, at this point, to make the playoffs, you'll rack up those victories however they come about. Lakers and Pelicans in New Orleans tonight. L.A. holding to the ninth spot right now, but by just a half a game, this game was a story of two halves. First half, all Los Angeles. They were up 69-49 at halftime, a 20-point lead. LeBron James had a game-high 39 points, became the second player in NBA history to reach 37,000 career points. But guess what? L.A. could only score another 39 points after the break. Brandon Ingram scored 26. Trey Murphy the third scored 21 off the Pelicans bench. And New Orleans comes back to win this 116-108. Not only do the Lakers not do the Spurs any favors, they actually drop in the standings. Here's the latest. So we'll start at the top as we always do. Phoenix at number one, way out in front, followed by Memphis at number two, Golden State three, Dallas at number four. In the second half of the top eight, Utah at five, Denver at six, Minnesota at seven, 
And at eight is the Clippers. Those are the guaranteed playoff positions. But in the play-in position, New Orleans now moves up to number nine. L.A. Is, drops down to 10. San Antonio is back of L.A. now, as you can see, at 11, followed by Portland and Sacramento. But good thing it's only, what is that? Just a one game behind the Lakers for that 10th play-in position. So here's a look at the Spurs schedule this week. They'll have Houston tomorrow. They'll be in Houston for that game. Then they come back home to host the Memphis Grizzlies on Wednesday. That'll be a tough one. And then, on again, Portland back-to-back -back games. The first course is going to be on Friday in the AT&T Center. The next one on Sunday in the AT&T Center. Note the early start time at 6 p.m. You know, it's been fun watching great teams come to San Antonio for the South Regional Games ahead of the Final Four to wrap up March Madness. Number one, Arizona, Houston, Michigan, and Villanova all got workouts in on Wednesday at the AT&T Center. And then on Thursday, the Cougars upset Arizona 72-60. And in the West Region, Arkansas upset number one, Gonzaga, leaving only one number one seed left in the tournament. That was Kansas in the Midwest Division. Wrapping up the South Region was number two, Villanova, hosting number five, Houston. The Cougars trailed 27-20 at halftime, rallied from a double-digit deficit in the second half to cut the lead down to 2 42 40 but they couldn't just get over the hump in part because they finished just one for 20 from three-point range houston falls short of the return of the final four 50 to 44. if you'd have told me before the game that we're going to hold them to 28 percent from the field they're going to shoot 23 percent from the three-point line uh and we lose i wouldn't have believed you i'm disappointed we lost we felt like this was a game we, we could win, not should win, could win. All right, in the Midwest region today, top seed of Kansas taking number 10 seed Miami Jayhawks, the last one seed left of the tournament. They turn on the Jets of the second half. Off the steal, Christian Braun throws down the two-handed jam on the breakaway to tie the game at 40. That kick starts an 8-0 run. Kansas never looks back, outscoring the Hurricanes 47-15 in the second half. Jayhawks win it 76-50. Kansas missed out on a prime opportunity to win a national title in 2020 with the COVID-19 pandemic. Canceling the tournament, they're looking for redemption after an early exit last year. It was definitely a heartbreak feeling knowing that we uh, definitely clawed our way to the top that year and we just had a lot of great pieces and felt like we could go really far in the tournament. Um, now this year just feels like we're kind of avenging that year. Now that we have the opportunity, we're going to make the most of it and just continue to uh, grow as a team with each game and um, just do what we weren't able to do or didn't have the opportunity to do uh, within that 2020 year. In the East region, the Cinderella story, number 15, St. Peter's taking on number eight, UNC, and the Peacocks ran into a buzzsaw. The Tar Heels opened the game on a 7-0 run, led 38-19 at the end of the first half. UNC wins easily, 69-49, setting up a rematch against Coach K and number two seeded Duke in the final four. Still, what a wonderful run for St. Peter's. You know, they, they shocked the world. They, you know, you got guys that's going to be remembered for things that they could tell their kids and grandkids and, like, it's, it's a story within the story. So I'm super proud of these guys. So they came in and, and, and made history. You know, people kind of push North Carolina to the side and saying how we were done and all this and that. And I'm just so glad to make it to the Final Four finally and kind of submit myself. I mean, we're not done yet, but just to, you know, submit myself and us as a team, me and Leaky specifically, just being able to say we won. All right, here's the matchup of the Final Four in the Superdome in New Orleans. It'll be number two, Villanova, against number one, Kansas, Saturday at 5.09. North Carolina against Duke, Saturday at 7.49. Time now for tonight's instant replay poll question. Who will win the NCAA men's basketball tournament, the national championship? Will it be Villanova, Duke, Kansas, or North Carolina? Vote now. We'll have the results at the end of the broadcast tonight. Out in the women's tournament here, number two, Texas, and number one, Stanford, in that Elite Eight matchup. Longhorns looking to rally in the fourth quarter. Audrey Warren hits the jumper. Longhorns on a 5-0 run, cut the lead down to two with under four minutes to play. But Stanford answers right back. Lexi Hull gets the layup to fall, counted, and won. She led all scores at 20 points. The Longhorns fall to the Cardo, 59-50. We have much more to come as March Madness nears the end. Up next, the Missions announced their 2022 Jersey Night themes, but first. And the Toros can't believe it. It's game day for San Antonio FC. We got the highlights and post-match reaction as SAFC tries to earn another three points on the road. Who are the sports guys picking to win the Final Four after the South Region wrapped up here in San Antonio yesterday? The sports guys decide as the Valero Texas Open is just days away from starting. The Roadrunners held Pro Day today, this past Wednesday, as NFL scouts descended on the UTSA campus. And what does Celine Dion have to do with baseball? And our play of the week, find out next as Instant Replay continues live next.